So a few months ago, I put out a video ranking the various Witcher 3 endings, and near the end of that upload, I promised I'd follow it up with an armor ranking. I held off on it for a while because I knew the next gen update was adding the Netflix set, but because I've been spending so much time with the combat and armor lately, I figured I should get to it now. There are seven in total, not including the starting armor of course, and this is a tough subject to do justice, but I've tried to do my very best by spending embarrassing amounts of time with each set and various builds to get this as accurate as possible. Of course, there is some level of subjectivity to something like this, especially in the middle, but keep in mind that no Witcher gear is trash. Every set is perfectly usable. To kick this off though, let's start with the Viper armor, which you could argue shouldn't even be included. The Viper set can't be upgraded to the Grandmaster tier, and because of that it's unable to grant you special abilities and stat bonuses for using the full set. The Viper armor is what it is when you buy the schematics during Hearts of Stone, and that's it. So it's a great option for a while, and it looks incredible, but ultimately it has drawbacks no other set has to deal with. Don't get me wrong, it's not bad, and it needs to be pointed out that the Viper set has very solid damage resistances, among the very best for medium armor. It's just unupgradable with no set bonuses, and you get the feeling that it was kind of an afterthought from CDPR, at least compared to every other set. When The Witcher 3 first came out, one of the most common complaints was that you couldn't upgrade the starting armor, and the Viper gear was their easy solution for that. Next, we have the Forgotten Wolven set, aka the Netflix armor. Now, I need to point out that while this list is not really based on looks, I do want to acknowledge that this set has two major cosmetic drawbacks. For one, it's the only gear that can't be customized with dyes. Every other set you can freshen up with a huge variety of colors. With this one though, no fun allowed. Second, and this is very subjective, while I really like how the regular set looks, I hate what it changes into at the Grandmaster level. It goes from the Season 1 look to Season 2, and I'm just not a fan of the Batman Witcher armor, it doesn't feel right. That's just the surface level stuff though, because ultimately this set is just outclassed by your other options. It's medium armor, meaning it's shooting for a balance between stamina regen and tankiness. The damage resistances it comes with are fairly unremarkable. They're very similar to the regular wolf set, but slightly weaker. On that note, this set is trying to be another Jack of All Trades build, meaning it doesn't fully commit to anything, but gives you moderate gains across the board. The problem, and the reason this comes in at 6, is that the regular wolf gear does a better job at being an all-around build. Like I said, the resistances are not as strong with the Forgotten Wolf armor, but more importantly, the primary stat bonus from each piece in the set pales in comparison to the regular wolf gear. For example, the standard Wolven Gauntlets give you a 12% sign intensity increase across the board. The Netflix Wolven Gauntlets give you a 12% sign intensity increase only to Ard, so instead of upgrading all of your signs, it's just benefiting one. The same could be said of the boots. Netflix gives you a bump just to the Eerdon sign, whereas the regular wolf boots give you an across-the-board damage increase, which is much more useful. Objectively speaking, just in terms of stats, three of the four armor pieces for the regular wolf set are dramatically better than the Netflix gear. The only exception where things are more even is the chest piece. The regular wolf has higher resistances and a significantly better boost to your adrenaline, but the Forgotten Wolf chest piece has the edge in terms of a damage boost. The set bonuses for using three or six pieces of the gear are also worth a mention. The three-piece bonus is very nice, it increases potion duration by 7% for each piece you're wearing. It doesn't really synergize with anything else this set does, I mean the Forgotten Wolven gear has no other alchemy benefits, but it is a nice little boost. The second bonus is kind of a gimmick move that ties to the quest where you get this armor. Within the quest, you can use Eerdon and then Ard to progress a boss fight, and the six-piece set bonus gives Ard a damage boost if you use it in an active Eerdon ring. It's a strong, effective move, but ultimately you're going to be able to get way more out of both Ard and Eerdon while also massively upgrading the other three signs with one of the sets that comes later. Forgotten Wolf is still one of the six best sets in the entire game, but the competition is stiff when it comes to Witcher gear, and unfortunately this set is a little confused when you compare it to the others. And even among the two Witcher sets that are meant to be that way, it comes in second behind the other option. Speaking of, at number 5 we have the regular Wolf School gear. And it pained me to do this because the wolf set is among my favorites in terms of looks and can make for a nice, well-rounded build. As I already said, this armor in terms of stats is just a better forgotten wolf set. It's solid at almost everything, but what it's best for is a sign and sword build. If you pick up the wolf gear and fully invest in just signs or just swords, what you're going to end up with is a worse griffin build or a worse cat build, just in terms of raw stats. It'll still be very solid and beyond usable, but still a weaker version of what you could have accomplished with other gear. That said, if what appeals to you is a Master of None setup where you're at least moderately invested in just about everything, then the Wolf Armor is for you, and is a very fun option. 
It's not going to let you fully take advantage of any of the late game broken mechanics you can borderline exploit, just because the upcoming four sets are capable of doing those things better. But what this set does offer is a lot of flexibility, and there's value in that. The set bonuses are okay, they were actually changed in the next gen update because they used to be extremely weak. I talk about that in my video going over the recent changes to Witcher gear. But the new bonuses are still less universally useful than some of the upcoming ones. They're centered around the bleed mechanic, and to take advantage of them requires you to invest in bleed. That means you better have the bleed skill equipped, and all of your sword rune slots are gonna need to be filled up with bleed runes for those set perks to even be sort of effective. And that limits what you can do with your swords. Once you've properly invested in bleed, you will have a nice little damage boost from it, plus the ability to apply multiple bleeding instances to a single opponent, but I do think there's something to be said about a set meant to give you a lot of freedom that also has bonuses requiring you to customize your swords in a very specific way. So before moving on, I should point out that at this point we are in the top tier. I do think there is kind of a clear 4 and 1, 2 and 3 are pretty arguable, but either way all of these sets are fantastic and in certain categories unbeatable. That said, the Manticore gear takes the number 4 spot. It's only available in Blood and Wine at a single level, so it's strictly a late game armor, and if you're wanting to invest heavily in alchemy, this is the set for you. It's a really good thing I waited until after the next gen update to make this video, because if I had made it before, then Manticore armor probably would have come in at least one, but likely two spots higher. The next gen update nerfed the Manticore set quite a bit, and alchemy in general. Pre-update, this set allowed you to have four decoctions active at all times while still having plenty of room for potions, but that's no longer the case. Several alchemy skills that were integral to the ideal Manticore build were nerfed, and the Manticore set itself was also toned down quite a bit. This video is not meant to be a thorough nerf breakdown, that's what I've been doing in my recent combat changes series, but the Manticore set was deeply affected by the recent changes, which has knocked it down a spot or two from where I would have had it. You can't use quite as many decoctions as you once could before you'll start taking toxicity damage, but Manticore gear still allows for the highest amount of alchemy use in the game. This set is all about a mix of critical hits and alchemy with solid but not exactly impressive levels of protection. One thing you absolutely need to be doing with this set is combining it with the Glyph Word Levity, which is a purchasable upgrade that changes medium armor, which Manticore gear is, into light armor. What that means is you can use the Cat School Technique perk with Manticore Gear, which dramatically increases your critical hit and fast attack damage for every piece of light armor you have equipped. The set bonuses also synergize very well with what Manticore Gear does best. They enhance bomb use while also giving you more potion charges, and because bombs were made significantly more powerful with this recent update, the gameplay can be very satisfying. I think the Manticore set strikes a nice balance of excelling at one specific thing, that being alchemy, and not ending up sort of one-dimensional. With this set, you also have other very strong tools at your disposal, like great critical hit numbers when you can land them, and very effective bomb use. Okay, feline gear or cat armor comes in at number 3. The more I thought about this, the more I was sure that this set needed to rank right where I have it. Where the cat set really shines is with raw sword damage output. Fast attacks and again critical hits will make quick work of any enemy. As a light armor set, the first and only of its kind on this list, the feline gear provides you quick stamina regen but far less protection than every other witcher set. Where this specific gear excels is by offering ridiculously high sword damage output and almost nothing else other than a reasonable level of protection and damage resistances. Combine this set with the Cat School Technique perks, which I just mentioned a minute ago, and you have a set that is unbeatable when it comes to sword damage output. That's not even to mention the set bonuses, which again, synergize so well with what this gear does best. The three-piece set bonus dramatically increases your fast attack damage for five seconds every time you sneak in a heavy attack, and the six-piece bonus gives you a 50% damage boost for any rear attacks. That alone can lead to a 110% fast attack bonus to a stat that is already upgraded to a very high level. It leads to some absolutely ridiculous critical hit numbers, far beyond what the Manticore set can get to these days with similar builds. Because this set offers less protection than others, although it is still adequate, what I like to do is combine the Cat School gear with the Glyph Word Protection, which gives you a free Quen Shield every time you enter combat at no stamina cost. Obviously, I can't go through a detailed optimization for each of these armor sets in a video like this, but I'm trying to throw in some of my favorite things to do to enhance what each armor already excels at. By the way, I have been thinking of doing a comprehensive 10 best builds video soon, but I'm not sure if that's something people would like to see or if there'd be an audience for it. Let me know in the comments or leave a like or something if you'd want to see me put something like that together. Moving on though, at number 2 I have the Griffin Armor. This and the number 1 spot are the two armor sets that, when even somewhat optimized, can absolutely break combat. The Griffin School gear is all about sign intensity and rapid stamina regeneration. 
If you want signs that make short work of absolutely anything in your path while also having solid protection and more than adequate sword damage, then use the Griffin set. It's my favorite Witcher gear in the entire game. I personally love how it looks, even though most people say it's ugly, and I guess I'm alone in loving the look, but this video isn't about style, it's about substance. There's really not that much that needs to be said about the Griffin armor. In my opinion, number one and number two are pretty clear cut for a list like this. Sign intensity can get so ridiculous with Griffin armor that absolutely nothing stands a chance after a certain point. Every single enemy has one or two specific sign weaknesses, and once you've invested in your sign intensity to the point where they're all overpowered, it means you can dismantle absolutely anything you come across. Throw blood and wine mutations and the rune right into the equation and things can just get out of hand. But this set and what's about to come in at number one are so powerful that I don't really even need to factor those in to justify their placement. Oh, I'm not even mentioning that the Griffin set bonuses are the best in the game. At three pieces, you can double cast, so you can instantly use two signs in a row with no delay. And at six pieces, Irden is dramatically upgraded. The trap size is increased by 40%, and while in the trap, your sign intensity, however high it is, will be doubled. And you'll also take 20% less damage and regenerate stamina faster. This set speaks for itself, it's just incredible. So, if I was praising Griffin so dramatically, what could possibly come in at number one? Well, it's the bear set, because of course it is. If you ever see an article tackling the same subject that has anything at number one other than the bear gear, I would just recommend discounting the entire thing, because the bear school gear is in a tier of its own. There's the bear armor, and then there's everything else. This set offers by far the best damage resistances in the entire game, and it's not even remotely close. In fact, the next-gen nerfs to Witcher gear, which affected the damage resistances of all sets, was inspired because the bear armor's benefits could be so easily exploited. That said, even after the resistances were toned down a bit, this set is still unbeatable. A full set of Grandmaster bear gear will give you extremely high damage reduction against almost every type of damage in the game. I'm not going to go through every stat, but just for monsters, that resistance is 50%. So, with no other upgrades or anything done to your build, you're already letting 50% less damage through against every monster type. Combine that with the perk protective coating, which gives you an extra 25% damage reduction dependent on your blade oil, and well, let's do the math. With just the armor and one perk, you're already up to a 75% damage resistance to all monsters. And keep in mind, that's applied only to the damage that gets through your armor. So to explain what I mean, the bear armor has an excellent base rating, meaning the damage it will protect you from before any resistances. That means you're already being partially protected from just the armor, and then that 75% damage resistance is being applied to what gets through. There's a ton more you can do with an optimized bear build to further reduce damage, but I think you get the idea. Now, the other incredible part of what bear armor can do takes us back to the levity upgrade, which turns your heavy bear armor into light armor. Now you have the ultimate tank build with none of the drawbacks. You'll move light on your feet with rapid stamina regen, and combine that with the cat school technique perk, and now the bear set is giving you massive critical hits. You're also in luck there, because if you choose to use the bear school swords, the main benefits they come with are huge boosts to your critical hit damage and chances of landing one in the first place. This armor set also gives you massive upgrades to your adrenaline gain, this meter right here on your screen. And what adrenaline does is dramatically increase your damage when full, and make certain abilities like Rend absolutely devastating. I think I've made my case at this point, but I should also acknowledge that the set bonuses are excellent. At three pieces, your Quen Shield has a chance to instantly replenish once it breaks, making you even more unkillable. And at six pieces, your Quen damage is increased by 200%. So if you use something like Exploding Shield, you can insta-kill half the enemies that do manage to break your shield. I could go on, but I think you get the idea. Well, that does it for today's video. If you enjoyed, consider leaving a like and let me know what your favorite Witcher set is. Also, I had a very important channel announcement I made on my last video that you may have missed, but I do want to mention again that next month I am going to be covering Hogwarts Legacy, but not on this channel. You guys subscribe for The Witcher, I want to respect that and keep this channel Witcher-based, but if you enjoy my style of in-depth content and are also interested in Hogwarts Legacy, feel free to subscribe to the second channel I've put together. Link is in the description, the name is Beyond Dumb and a pun just like the name for Neon Knight, but I already have the art arranged for it and I think it turned out nicely. The channel is not going to be low effort content by any means, that series was everything for me growing up, and I have a few long form video ideas that I'm going to want to make while playing. I realize subscribing before I've even posted a video is a big ask, but hey, if you like my content, there's a place for more of it. Anyway, thank you for watching, consider subscribing if you enjoyed this video, and I will see you in the next one.